so much. I'm honored to be here um, to share some of the work we've been doing in little old Virginia. Um, first of all, does everybody know what we're looking at here? Photomicrograph of a biotite grain, very important potassium bearing mineral. Um, so quick little intro to where I'm coming from, Virginia, the red state on the map here. Um, Virginia considers herself the uh, birthplace of American viticulture because Thomas Jefferson, one of our founding fathers, uh, unsuccessfully tried to grow grapevines uh, 250 years ago. Um, with the, uh, you know, with rootstocks and everything, we've figured it out. Um, Virginia rakes fifth in the U.S. for vineyard uh, acreage, trailing by an order of magnitude behind Oregon. Um, We've got about 4,000 acres under vine. Um, we have seven AVAs, and I come from the Monticello AVA, which is named for Thomas Jefferson's home. Um, Virginia is located in the mid-Atlantic province of the US. These are the five physiographic provinces. From west to east, we've got the Appalachian Plateau. It's characterized by flat-lying sedimentary rocks. Uh, then the uh, Valley and Ridge province, which is characterized by thrust-faulted carbonate and clastic sedimentary rocks. And then the Blue Ridge province, that orange band uh, running northeast southwest, is characterized by steep terrain, metamorphic bedrock. The Piedmont province is uh, characterized by very thick regolith, gently rolling terrain, igneous metamorphic bedrock. And then the coastal plain is a, a thickening wedge. It, it's a wedge of unconsolidated sediments that thickens to the east. Uh, so we've got a wide variety of soil types, hydrology, all that stuff. Our, bay, our, our biggest challenge in the east is the amount of precipitation that we get. Um, we all know that the timing of precipitation throughout the growing season is very important for wine growing. And just to show you, um, to put it in perspective, uh, Washington, D.C. is located smack in the middle of the mid-Atlantic. Um, these are the average monthly rainfall rates. So you can compare it to Portland. Obviously, uh, <laughs> it rains where I come from. Um, so a quick little background on potassium. It's kind of uh, being talked about a lot in Virginia right now um, because it plays a critical role in the pH of uh, must and wine. Uh, it's important for color retention, microbiological stability. And uh, a bunch of growers that we've worked with have noticed that they prefer the fruit coming out of blocks that have less potassium in the soil. Um, and agronomists, consultants, are still recommending people add potassium fertilizer to their vineyards. So we set out, um, we received some grant funding from the Virginia Wine Board to um, collect a bunch of data and basically try to convince them that they, we, we do not need to be adding potassium to our soils. Um, th th this is what the grower sees when they send a, when they get a lab report back. Uh, on the left, uh, I'm just going to summarize really quickly, is the soil data. Note the VL in the left column, that's very low. I, don't, well, I can't get this, well, anyway. They, the lab's telling them that their potassium is very low. In the same spot in the vineyard, the petiole data indicates that potassium is high. So there's this paradox and everybody's confused. Um, and it's basically because the, the lab methods are only, the soil lab methods are only measuring 2% of the potassium. Um, the four forms of soil, uh, soil K are soil solution, exchangeable, non-exchangeable and mineral K. The lab methods are measuring just soil solution and exchangeable K. Um, so now we're going to get to my research site. This is Pollock Vineyards in Green, Greenwood, Virginia. It's in the Blue Ridge province. And um, this is sort of the, this is a site where a couple of different research projects have sort of coalesced. So the research at this site has evolved as we've done it. Um, a little bit of background about the site itself. Um, our study block is located on a debris fan that's uh, on the Dyke Soil Series. It's predominantly greenstone, colluvium. Greenstone is metamorphosed basalt. So we get those deep red colors like we saw yesterday. Um, everything is set up exactly the same in the vineyard. It's Cab Franc FPS4 clone on 101 root, 101.14 rootstock, um, north-south rows, same treatments across the board. Um, so these are the research questions. It started out, does electromagnetic conductivity mapping uh, accu accurately represent soil variability in this vineyard? And we convinced ourselves, yes, it does. And the next question became, OK, well, how does that affect vine behavior and wine quality? Um, 
and then and we started seeing these differences in wine quality and then we asked ourselves could it be uh, related to K uptake in the vineyard and that's still an open-ended question and I'm glad to be presenting this to you guys because I'm looking forward to hearing feedback uh, and input about what might be going on here. Um, so first step, uh, EM surveys. I've run a, probably a couple of dozen EM surveys on this site with uh, re reproducible results, uh, electromagnetic conductivity mapping, if, if you're not familiar with it, basically um, uses electromagnetic induction to map the electrical conductivity of the soils, correlates to a number of uh, soil factors. So these are our two soil zones. The, the red box is our study block, a three acre cab front study block. The blue zone, we're gonna call the low conductivity zone. And the red, or the uh, green, orange zone, we're calling the high conductivity zone. And you can see these are uh, plugs that I grabbed with a bucket auger, the subsoils. Um, so the subsoil in the low conductivity is sandy clay loam with greenstone gravels and the High conductivity zone is a, a heavy, heavy clay soil. Um, we have run lots of soil infiltration rates with a Johnson permeameter, a constant head permeameter. Um, we've done backhoe pit investigation to look at the roots and log the soil profile. Um, we've, got, we've done pruning weights for three years. This is Benoit, one of my research partners. He's the winemaker. And we've also collected petiole samples, berry sampling, We've done differential harvests and experimental winemaking in three vintages. Um, and we've got some chemical data from the wine. Um, so this is a drone image from uh, one of the days we were digging backhoe pits. You can see we've got a pit in each soil zone. First, we're going to look at the high conductivity zone, the one in the red here. So um, this is a photograph of uh, the root zone. Uh, the image on the right, the drawing on the right is drawn to scale. The brown area represents presence of roots. As you can see, there is an abrupt end to the root zone at 46 centimeters depth, which corresponds to the, the blue line, which is um, compressive strength as measured with a hand penetrometer in the field. So you can see an abrupt jump in compressive strength and a corresponding uh, end to the root zone. There's also a corresponding abrupt pH shift downward at that same spot in the profile. And then, and, and note, the, the, you know, these are pretty shallow roots, 18 inches, okay? And these are, what, 13-year-old vines. So here we go to the low conductivity zone, a much deeper root zone, down to 42 inches or 107 centimeters. Uh, again, we see a corresponding uh, abrupt jump in uh, soil compressive strength at the bottom of the root zone. We do see a more gradual sh uh, pH uh, shift downwards. As far as the infiltration rates, so the subsoil of the low conductivity zone uh, drain at about 41 millimeters an hour, subsoil of the high conductivity zone a half a millimeter an hour. Um, here's some soil chemical data. Um, basically, uh, the takeaway from this slide is that the high conductivity zone has pretty much more of everything in it. It's more fertile. Uh, but except the low conductivity zone does have more organic matter. Here's some petiole data. As I said, this is an evolving project, so we only have petiole data from 2014 and 2015. Um, the blues represent the low conductivity zone. The highs represent the high conductivity zone. Um, basically, I'm just pointing out that the only, um, the only relationship that appears to um, present itself year after year is the potassium. Um, you can see there's, you know, there's a little vintage variation there, but the other ones, we don't see consistent relationships. And then uh, for the winemaking, you can see upon crush, you can already tell a difference in the juice. Uh, the right is the high conductivity clay soil. The left is the low conductivity sandy clay loam with greenstone gravels. Here's some data from our 2014 uh, work. As you can see, I'm just going to point out a couple things. The pH of the wine, uh, low conductivity is about a 3.8 pH, 3.79, and high conductivity is 3.95. As a geoscientist, when I first 
<laughs> we first uh, got our results the first year, and I said, oh, that's not that much different. And my winemaker friend said, yeah, actually, that's, that's pretty different, you know. And I, it's, I'm, still, I'm still getting used to, because, you know, if that, were, if that were a water sample, you know. <laughs> um, sugar. We've got even sugar, uh, suggesting, you know, even ripeness across the block. The yields are pretty close, 3.2 and 3.35. And then um, we've got higher vigor in the in the high conductivity soil. And then uh, just a couple of bar graphs to show the observations that we've made uh, with the experimental wines. Every year for the past three years, the high conductivity wine is higher pH. And uh, we only have potassium data from 2014 and 2015, but we do see that the potassium uh, agrees with the, uh, with the pH. So basically, we were able to uh, map significant soil variability that does affect the vine performance with EM. Um, these zones do consistently produce unique wines. We're going to continue this uh, as many years as we can. And, and um, the biggest point, and this goes back to my potassium soapbox aimed at the uh, East Coast um, wine industry, is that even in the lowest K lot, we still see elevated potassium levels. We would like to see them lower. Um, thank you very much. We do, I do have some wines, some, these wines available to taste downstairs. You'll be able to tell the difference um, when tasting the big differences really in the mouthfeel, the tannin. Um, so we'll, I'll be downstairs um, during the poster session.